Dear learners, so far we have discussed a few concepts of tertiary reproduction in the first video. In this video, let us discuss a few important concepts of production, namely the concept of velocity of substitution, properties of isoquants, and the law of variable proportions, its various stages and significance. Illustrative substitution, it is basically the degree of substitutability between two inputs is measured by elasticity of substitution. It is the proportionate sense in the ratio of the factors divided by proportionate sense in the marginal rate of technical substitutions, MRTS. So therefore, illustrative substitution is given as proportionate sense in the ratio of the factors divided by proportionate sense in the MRTS. So elastic substitution varies between 0 and infinity. When two factors cannot be substituted at all, that means when elastic substitution is 0. On the other hand, elastic substitution is infinite when the two factors are perfect substitutes. That is, elastic substitution is 1. Now, properties of isoquants. We have already discussed the concept of isoquants. Now, let us understand some of its properties. An isoquant slopes downward from left to right. It happens because when quantity of labor is increased, the quantity of capital must be reduced so that there is no sense in quantity of produced. Now, two isoquants cannot intersect each other. If they intersect each other, there will be common factor combination for two different levels of output. This has been explained with the help of figure 7.4. In figure 7.4, you will see that output level at point A is same as output level at point C. Similarly, output level at point B is also same as output level at point C. Thus, output level at point A is equal to output level at point B. This is completely ridiculous, you will see. So, it can be said that two isoquants cannot intersect. Every isoquant is convex to the origin. The convexity property of an isoquant means that as you move down on the curve, less and less of capital is required to be substituted by a given increment of labor as to keep the level of output constant. In other words, the convexity is due to the diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. The degree of convexity of the isoquant depends on the rate at which the diminishes. If the isoquants are concave to the origin, it would mean that the marginal rate of technical substitution is increasing and more capital is replaced to get one additional unit of labor, which is not the case. Another important property of isoquant is an isoquant moves upward to the right. It represents higher levels of output. That means as an isoquant moves upward to the right, it will represent a higher level of output. This has been shown in figure number 7.5. Here you will see that IQ2, isoquant IQ2 is higher level than IQ1 and it represents higher level of output. Similarly, IQ3 is higher than IQ2 and it represents a higher level of output than IQ2. There may be a number of isoquants in between two isoquants. They show various levels of output that combination of two input can produce between any two isoquants. Now let us discuss the concept of law of variable proportions. The law of variable proportions occupies an important place in the field of production. The law studies the sciences in the quantity of production when one input is variable and all other inputs used in production are kept constant. In other words, it shows how output changes which changes in the quantity of one input while other inputs are kept constant. The law of variable proportions is the new name for the famous law of diminishing marginal returns, diminishing returns of classical economics. Now its assumptions. Let us discuss the assumptions of this law. The first assumption is there should not be any sense in the state of technology. The second assumption is only one input will undergo sense in quantity, keeping all other inputs constant. All the units of the variable factor are homogeneous and it is possible to sense the proportion in which the various inputs are combined. To study the law of variable proportions, let us assume that the producer will keep capital constant and increase the inputs of labor. We have taken a hypothetical table 
let us uh, see from table 7.3 it is clear that with the successive increase in the units of labor the marginal product of labor mpl increases for some time but with the increase in successive units mpl starts declining in this way when total product is maximum mpl becomes zero and average productivity of labor apl starts declining again it can be seen that from the table 7.3 that total product is the highest when marginal productivity of labor mpl is zero you can see it's in stage 7 that means when we are employing 7 unit of labor in our example then the total product is 395 which is highest but the marginal product of labor is zero after this point both total and average product fall and marginal product of labor becomes negative it will see total product comes down to 360 at when we engage eight units of labor and the marginal product of labor is minus 35. we can study the rise and fall of production with diagrams in three stages we can help take help of a diagram and we can study these three stages let us consider diagram 7.6 now from table 7.3 we see the behavior of output with varying quantity of labor and fixed quantity of capital the rise and fall of output can be divided into three stages as we have already mentioned and it has been shown in figure 7.6 now here the stage one is in the first stage the total output to a point increases at an increasing rate in the above in the figure 7.6 it can be seen that the total output increases rapidly up to point F. This point is called the point of inflection. From this point onwards, in stage 1, total output increases but at a slower rate. Stage 1 ends at a point where average product is the maximum. In this stage, the quantity of the fixed factor, that is capital, is too much relative to the quantity of the variable factor level so that if some of the fixed factor is withdrawn the total product will increase stage one is known as the stage of increasing returns stage two in stage two the total product continues to increase at a diminishing rate until it reaches its maximum point eight please refer to figure six seven point six again where the second stage ends at the end of second stage marginal product becomes zero this stage is known as the stage of decreasing returns as both the average and marginal product of the variable factors continuously fall during this stage. Stage 3. In stage 3, the marginal product becomes negative. As we saw when employing 8 units of labor, the marginal product was minus 35 in the example 7.3. Therefore, both total product and average product declines. In this stage, total product curve and average product curve slopes downward and marginal product curve goes below the x-axis. This is the opposite of first stage. In stage 3, variable factor, that is labor, is too much in relation to fixed factor capital. This stage is called the stage of negative returns. Now, out of these three stages, a rational producer will always like to produce in stage 2. The producer will not choose stage 1 where marginal product of fixed factor is negative. If he chooses this stage, he will not be utilizing completely the opportunity of production by increasing variable factor. A rational producer will never choose stage 3 also because in this stage he can always increase output by reducing the quantity of variable factor whose quantity is excess in production of fixed factor. Even when the variable factor is free, the rational producer will stop at the end of seven stages. Now let us discuss the significance of this law of variable proportions. The law of variable proportions is very important in the field of economics. Till Marshall, it was believed that the law was applicable in the field of agriculture only. But a modern economist propounded the law is equally applicable to industries and other productive activities. If the law actually does not occur, we can produce any amount of food grain in a small size of holding by using more and more amount of labor and capital. But in spite of the presence of the law of variable proportions, a country like India 
need not be pessimistic where there is tremendous pressure of population and agriculture production is not sufficient. Productivity in the field of agriculture can be increased by making advancement in technology to avoid food crisis. So this is the end of this video session and in the next video we will be again discussing some of the remaining concepts of this unit number 7 starting with returns to scale. Thank you.